My name is Hans Meyer, Hans Peter Meyer, and uh, I'm having wine chats with Gregor Mowat. Um, Gregor is the Director of Operations here at Crown Island in the Comox Valley. Uh, he's also got a lot of history in, in uh, wine, and we're going to talk a bit about that. But first, um, I just want to say uh, thanks, Gregor, for this lovely wine out of Spain. Spain. Um, great flavor. And I think you said it was like what, 12 or 13 dollars a bottle? It's um, 12.99, so it's not available in the government stores currently. So again, the private system will probably mark it up a little bit more on top of that. Right. So probably it would be under 15 dollars. I would be pretty comfortable saying. It's the Santa Cruz Tenda Alpera. It's a uh, Grenache. But we're going to move right into. Um, a little bit of Gregor's background and, and also the wine program here at Crown Isle. It's part of a series of conversations I'll be having with people about wine and beverages in the Comox Valley. Uh, what's your background, Gregor? Give us, uh, give us the, um, the Coles Notes. Coles Notes, uh, restaurant and hotel background out of university. Uh, was in the Four Seasons Hotel and opened a restaurant in Vancouver called Chin Chin on Robson Street. Did that for... Uh, so what was your role at Chin Chin? Because, I mean, I've heard about it. I'm sure lots of people have. Started out as beverage ma beverage manager, I suppose, bar manager. Mm -hmm. Worked my way to general manager. Was there for eight years. Left that business. Um, I just want to note here, because this is kind of interesting local lore, is that you hired Sandra Viney, who is kind of a major pol person in our restaurant scene here at, at Atlas and Avenue Bistro. Yeah, she was uh, my cocktail waitress going back, oh, I don't want to say how many years because that'll date us, but uh, it was a while ago, needless to say, and so Sandra was one of the first people I contacted when I moved to the Comox Valley. Um, uh, after uh, Chin Chin, I joined a rather large wine and spirit company as a salesperson, downtown salesperson for Vancouver and Whistler, and then from there migrated into uh, buying into a company where I was managing partner of a predominantly uh, import company mm -hmm. and, and uh, in for British Columbia, so we imported wines and sold them to the government liquor stores, uh, to private stores, to licensees, and what have you. So was with that company, had my own business for almost six years before coming to Crown Island. So were you traveling a lot to Europe and other places, uh, trying like tasting wine? My uh, my sort of my my segment that I looked after because my partner at the time was very well versed in uh, France and, and, uh, and Spain. So I sort of took over the Italian category. So I would go Tough to, job. Yeah, yeah, I would go to Italy uh, uh, definitely once a year, sometimes twice a year. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's on your own ticket. So it's not a oh. uh, you know, small right. company. You, you, have to, you have to really get a lot of... Uh, you have to drink a lot of wine to make it pay to go over there. Yes, you do. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so what are you doing here in the Comox Valley? Well, as director of operations, I manage the whole property uh, at Crown Isle, the, the golf, the villas, the food and beverage end, end of things. Mm -hmm. The wine perspective, the wine end of uh, my position is a very small percentage of what I do. It's a lot of fun. It's a uh, part of that I love, uh, but I have to balance my time with um, my overall job here. So I came in to Crown Isle a year ago, and the wine list was, I would say, quite dated. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to freshen it up with some new ideas and um, introduce some new labels, some new varietals, new regions to, to our customers. So, I mean, wine is an incredibly complex thing. There's so many different varietals, there's so many different blends. Uh, there's hundreds of years of history, hundreds, thousands of years of history in some parts of the world. Uh, in this part of the world, we're really young. Um, can you tell us, tell me me a little bit about how, you know how, kind of what do British Columbians or people from Vancouver Island or even this part of the island how, how do we appreciate or or not uh, that that incredible complexity and, and richness? It's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know that I have the answer yet. Of being here just a year. Um, I've noticed some trends that I've seen in the valley compared to Vancouver. Vancouver is a big city. You know, there's several million people in the city, and uh, with that, you get a lot more attention worldwide. Uh, you get a lot more exposure to new ideas, new trends, new varietals, new regions. You, you get the exposure. The Comox Valley doesn't quite get that um, attention just yet. Uh, I have seen, though, in the year I've been here, a uh, greater number of agents coming up here now. To one to see me, they know I'm a wine person, so it's a little more worth it's worth their while to see me along with their trip. 
but also helpful with the new liquor store just opening around the corner here at Cascadia. Mm-hmm. That again, it gives them another stopping point to try and sell their wares. Uh, again, coming from Victoria, if you're a wine agent, it has to be worth your while. And to sell one case of wine doesn't pay for your gas. Mm-hmm. So the combination. Uh, so our valley still is, is doesn't get a lot of attention. I mean, it, it gets a certain amount, but not from as much as what I was used to seeing. Mm-hmm. And so if I can bring a little bit of my experience to Crown Isle and in turn to our, our guests that come to Crown Isle, um, that's really what I'm trying to do with, with the wine program here. So what can we expect to see uh, in the next few months? Uh, you know, what, what kind of change or let's start like what kind of changes have you made and, and where are you going to be headed? Made a almost 100% wholesale change on the wine list. Uh, all the wines by the glass changed. Um, I look at uh, when I get, when I have a visit from a, a, a wine agent um, I look at what they're offering. Will it fit? Is there something um, on its way out on the list? Is there something that's uh, a lot of my wines are one case two case buys and so if you're here now uh, or the next few weeks, you'll you'll be the recipient of a, of that particular product. Um, but that the way it keeps it fresh, that you're not mm-hmm. just laminating a wine list that that's vintage lists and you know done by Shadow Nif de Pop. I'd like to talk about the the producer, the varietal. If it's a blend, what's in the varietal or what's in the blend? Excuse me. The vintage is extremely important. Uh, all those things take time to ki- keep up on. And so, what how are people responding to this, to these changes? I don't know if they're responding at all. Uh, I think that it, uh, it's, it's, it's fun for me when I do work the restaurant. I'm not here every night, but when I do, uh, it is fun when I see a nice different label go out, just to go over and just briefly say, hi, how are you? How are you enjoying your wine? And are you, are you familiar with it or what have you? Um, it, it's a work in progress. I don't expect every person to be ordering Garnacha or Verdeos or, you know, Rieslings and what have you. But um, it, it, it's a work in progress, and the whole idea is to educate without being educational. Mm-hmm. Just to show a new label, and, and if it's fairly priced and it delivers for the, the, the price that we're selling it at, um, you, you win a fan one by one by one. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we do get the larger groups from Calgary, Edmonton, and Vancouver uh, that have maybe a, a, a broader spectrum of wine uh, knowledge or, or ex- uh, exposure, I can tell that too because I see the labels that they order right. versus um, everyday bottles of wine. So, If I was to come to your restaurant tonight, and you know a little bit about what, um, what I like to drink, uh, how would you challenge me? What, what bottle would you be suggesting I buy? Well, you're an old world person, um, so I mean, I might try and throw something to uh, challenge, not just keep you in in where right. your comfort zone is. Uh, this Han Pinot Noir that's on the table here from Monterey, California, it's a great example of, of affordable Pinot Noir um, that has some old world characteristic to it. It's not a uh, necessarily a cookie cutter new world Pinot Noir. Mm-hmm. So I might throw something at that like that to you. Um, or I might just pick something really bizarre and just say, what do you think? And, and uh, you know, I, I always know the wines on the list are good. So if, if you're not going to like it and you, you tell me before you drink the whole bottle, I'll probably take it back from you and try something different. Um, and that's kind of just, it, it should be part of the experience, part of the dining experience mm-hmm. and, and round out the meal. It shouldn't be the star of the meal. Uh, the food and wine should work together. If your company's good, then you've got a pretty good experience. Okay. Thank you very much. I, I, uh, I definitely have enjoyed some, to me, interesting and challenging um, glasses and bottles of wine here. And I appreciate uh, you being part of uh, what I think is a very interesting uh, uh, food and, and beverage scene here in the Comox Valley, Camel River area. Um, thank you very much, Gregor. My pleasure. And uh, thank you for watching.